And thank you, especially we're praying for Ram's family. Uh, it's such a joy to, uh, I'm not only I believe that I'm a blessing to you, you're all a blessing to me. All of you are a blessing to me. It's such a joy. And I, I'm really going to miss uh, these uh, uh, 10, 20 days of not having <laughs> Zoom meetings. But um, there'll be other meetings there'll be. But uh, it's such a joy to serve God and to be a blessing and to be blessed. While we uh, rejoice in the fact that we are celebrating Christmas, and uh, the Christmas season, we are all in a very joyful mood and wonderful worship uh, uh, songs, the carol songs, the children sang, so wonderful it was, so edifying. And the whole season, we are going to be singing these songs, and I suppose. But let's also remember uh, the responsibility we have in God revealing Christ to the world today. We have a responsibility. While we wish each other Merry Christmas and have a good time and all those things are fine, but it's important for us to realize we have a responsibility before God towards people on God revealing Christ to the world for the world to recognize the Savior. When Christ entered the world 2,000 years ago, it's amazing to know the creator of the world, when he entered the world, the world did not recognize him. He says in John chapter 1, verse 10 onwards, he was in the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. The world meaning non-Jews. When the Jews referred to uh, uh, the world, worldly people, they are non-Jews in those days, non-Christians today, worldly people we say. So, and John wrote that, he talks about the world didn't recognize him. He came to that which was his own, own meaning Jews, was 11 and 12. His own did not receive him. The Jews didn't receive him. Not only that, even they didn't recognize him. After begin, beginning, beginning his ministry, the Bible records how once the Lord Jesus Christ was coming down the Mount of Olives towards Jerusalem, city of Jerusalem, 19th chapter of Luke, 41 to 44, and uh, he wept over the city. Wept over the city because they didn't recognize God's coming to them. He said, you recognize God coming to you. God coming to them was Christ coming to them. The world didn't recognize him. The Jews didn't recognize him. But very interestingly, the evil one recognized him. In Matthew 8, 29, we see demons telling Jesus, what do you want with the son of the most high God? Have you come to torture us before the appointed time? Isn't it very ironic? The world didn't recognize him, the savior, the creator. The Jews didn't recognize him, but the devil recognized him. The Jews are waiting for the Messiah to come like a king, a deliverer who delivered them from Roman rule, from everything that was holding them. They didn't expect him to come in a very simple way. He was born into a very poor family. You know, uh, Joseph and Mary, they couldn't afford, uh, Mary couldn't afford uh, to, for, for her offering, burnt offering. She couldn't afford a lamb. You know, the Bible says in the book of Leviticus, 12th chapter, 6 to 8, the, the rules for a lady who has had a child for purification. Uh, eighth day after the child is born, if it's a male child, it would have to be circumcised. And after 33 days, she would have to come to the uh, tent of meeting in those days, later on in the temple, uh, to offer a one-year-old lamb as a burnt offering. Or, and and a young pigeon or a dove as a sin offering. Burnt offering, sin offering. And the Bible goes on to say, if she can't afford that, if she can't afford to buy a lamb, year old lamb, and a pigeon or a dove, she can bring two young pigeons or two young doves. What happened in the case of Mary? She brought the latter, not the lamb. Which means, for nine months approximately, when she was pregnant, she couldn't save enough money to buy a lamb. Being someone who loved God, she would have loved to buy a lamb and give a very good offering. She couldn't afford. Simple, poor family. The Messiah is born to a very poor family. The world didn't recognize him. The Jews didn't recognize him. But God ensured some people recognized him. For example, the shepherds out in the field, their visitation from 
an angel in heaven. And many angels joined them, joined this angel. Luke chapter 2, 8 to 10. And the shepherds were told by the angel about the Savior being born in Bethlehem. They had a heavenly visitation for them to know where to go to see the Savior of the world, the Messiah. The angel gave them good news of great joy for all the people. But in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. For the shepherds, for the wise men who came from the east, how did they come to know the Messiah, recognize the Messiah? Through a moving star. It's not the formation of the stars. Don't think it's astrology. It was not astrology. It was a moving star. Matthew chapter 2, verse 9, it refers to the star moved and came and rested upon the place where the Messiah was. So in the case of the wise men, who could recognize the movement of the stars, they came to the Messiah, recognized the Messiah through a moving star. Shepherds, simple, childlike, humble people, an angel appeared, heavenly visitation, that's how they came to know. Wise men, being wise, they could interpret the movement of the stars, and they came to the Messiah. What about Simeon? Luke chapter 2, verse 27. Simeon was an elderly man. He had been told that he would not die till he sees the Lord's Christ. And it says in Luke 2, 27, moved by the Spirit, went to temple courts to see the Messiah. Moved by the Spirit. He could sense the moving of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit in him. Three different ways God brought people to recognize the Messiah. In the case of shepherds, angel. case of wise men, moving star. In the case of Simeon, the Holy Spirit moving his heart. And they can recognize the Messiah. That was 2,000 years ago. Today, if you ask any person, non-Christian today, about Christmas, they will think it's a Christmas tree, Santa Claus, cakes, pastries, singing jingle bells, and all these songs. That's what they think. In fact, we ask some young children who are not, uh, don't know Jesus from some other faith, uh, what is Christmas? Actually, I had this experience. They will say, Santa Claus's birthday. You don't even know it's Christ's birthday. Santa Claus's birthday. So for them, it's all Santa Claus and Christmas tree and cakes and pastries. How many people know who Christ is and how we enter the world and the primary purpose why we enter the world? That's why you and me come in. What is God's plan today, the 21st century, to reveal Christ to the world? It is you and me. He wants you and me to be a display of his splendor. The shepherds had to go to Bethlehem to see the Messiah. The wise men came from the east following a star. Simeon was moved by spirit within Jerusalem to go to the temple. What about today's world? As we are faithful to the gospel and as we live for Jesus, God will move them to come to us. God wants to reveal Christ in us to others. Colossians 1.27 says, Christ in you, hope of glory, is God's word. As much God's word as John 3.16, Christ lives in us. So God will make people recognize Christ in us by the way we live, by our fruit they will recognize. When God brings them to us, we are called to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Galatians, in chapter 1, 15-17, Look what the Apostle Paul writes to the Galatians. When God who set me apart from birth and called me by his grace was pleased to reveal his son in me. That I might preach him among the Gentiles. I didn't consult any man. I didn't go to Jerusalem to see the apostles who were apostles before I was. I went to Arabia, they found Damascus. He says, God was pleased, called me by his grace, set me apart from birth, was pleased to reveal Christ in me. 
They may preach among the Gentiles. So today, God is pleased to reveal Christ in us to the world. Christ in us. He lives in us. Have you forgotten that? How often Christians forget that? They'll pray, Lord, be with me, Lord. Be with my family. He's inside you already. He'll never leave us. Have you forgotten? Whenever we say, be with me, we are doubting God's presence in us. And God has much more plans than just being in us. He wants to reveal himself in us to others. And the Apostle Paul says very clearly, God is pleased to reveal Christ in me. So what's our responsibility? To live for him. No longer living for ourselves, we live for him. Earlier, we lived for ourselves or we lived for the world, not anymore. Second Corinthians 5.15 says, and he died for all that those who live will no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. As we let Christ work through us, live his life through us, we'll be spectators in God revealing Christ in us to others. Please never forget we are the workmanship of God. Ephesians 2.10 And his plan is that through his people, his splendor be made evident to people. In the Old Testament time, he told the Jews in Isaiah 49.3, You are my servant Israel, in whom I will display my splendor. And they failed God many ways. And God spoke about you and me, New Testament believers. In Isaiah chapter 61, verse 3, they'll be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Wherever we are, I'm in Delhi, many of you are all over the world, come are from France and from uh, Canada, I know I can see the names. Wherever we are, we are a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Our responsibility to live for him for revealing Christ to the world. Before he comes a second time, he wants his gospel to be shared at the ends of the world. In Matthew 24, chapter verse 14, Jesus says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the ends of the world, a testament to all nations. Then the end will come. Then the end will come. So God will take us to people to share the gospel. He'll bring people to us, especially those who are searching for peace, We've been given peace. We believers have been given peace. And God will make them recognize the peace in us and ask us, how come you got so much of peace? And we are called to lift up the name of Jesus. While well, we celebrate Christmas and feel very happy about songs we sing and the, uh, eating cakes and having fellowship with each other, it's wonderful to do that, to rejoice, celebrate Christ. But how about people are perishing? God is looking to us to be co-workers with him. To reveal Christ to the world. And we have a responsibility. May God bless us as we take the response very seriously and say, Lord, I will no longer live for myself. I will live for you, Lord. I want to, your life to be seen through me. And Lord, give me words to go and talk to people and tell them they have a Savior. A Savior who has given them eternal life and abundant life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this responsibility you've given us, Lord. Help us, Lord, in the coming year, 2022, Lord. Live every moment for you, Lord. And even at Christmas time now, we pray, you'll reveal Christ in us to others, Lord. You know, Christ is not in a manger. He's not even in the temple. He lives in us. And Lord, we thank you, Lord. You'll never leave us. You'll never forsake us. I come as all of us in your hands, Lord. Each one of us will live for you, Lord, and enjoy living for you, Lord. May your peace and joy always pervade our lives. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.